Books and Reviews from 2018. I did excerpts of Douglas Hofstetter's Fluid Concepts and Creative Analogies. Do recommend that one. Seven Brief Lessons on Physics by Carlo Rivelli. He recorded a strong narrative about the development of the science and the relationship between mathematics and philosophy. Essentialism by Greg McCown. If you feel spread thin, check this one out. Particularly like the ending of chapter 17, which addressed progress. Perspective matters to evaluation. Reduce the non-essential. The Beautiful Necessity by Claude Bragnan. Very old book. Uh, It's seven essays on theosophy and architecture. Very much appreciated that one at that point in time. I'm going to toss up a couple of images here. Did some excerpts of David Graeber's debt. I started reading the book because I wanted to see what he said about the barter system specifically. Debt concludes that something like a biblical jubilee may be necessary to reestablish economic balance in the coming centuries on a global scale. Wealth and Poverty by George Gilder. Entrepreneurs like artists introduce new information into the market to grow the economy. The productive arts, you might call it. Capitalism rhymes with innate human motivation behavior. The essence of the universe is creative consciousness. Tribe by Sebastian Younger wasn't what I expected it to be, but I do appreciate that the author did the reading himself. A couple of ideas. People in developed countries suffer depression at eight times the rate of poor countries. Modern society has perfected the art of making people feel unnecessary. How to Lead When You're Not in Charge by Clay Scroggins addresses patience and the approach to leadership for those that are attempting to define their style of leadership from the outside. He says to take charge of yourself, the panoptic view, the smallest of details and the largest of challenges. Are you building that bridge or putting up a wall? Spectrums by David Blattner is a recent favorite that is full of excellent diagrams and quotes. Highly recommend for anyone looking to make sense of the world through the lens of science. Couple quotes. Each electron is in a constant probability cloud. So who is to say if the sound of song or prayer could not excite that which is beyond our seeing? Skimmed through parts of A Pattern Language by Christopher Alexander. It's really an encyclopedia that interweaves its points throughout the sections by referencing ideas all over the place, kind of directing you to meander through the book. It does require ownership. I do need to return to this one. I should own it and will likely buy a copy at some point. Brain Bugs by Dean Buonamano is a very insightful look at our flaws of cognition and psychology. Couple of notes, Hebb's rule, neurons that fire together wire together equals birds of a feather within cells interlinked. Who would want to buy used love? There is no Pablo Picasso of touch. Interesting point there. Devil in the White City by Eric Larson is about Chicago's 1893 Columbian Exposition, World's Fair. It's a great combination of history and narrative that brings the topic, as well as Burnham's legacy, to life. Of course, I would go on to do a lot of work on Chicago 1893 after that. I finished that book. I finished that book at the very end of what was the original thread of photos that I shared on Twitter. Smarter, Faster, Better by Charles Duhigg has helpful perspective as well as anecdotes about productivity improvement. Few notes, one third of U.S. workers freelance, contract, or are in transitory positions. Superstars are drawn to early stage projects that require diverse learning. You can't delegate thinking. Uncertainty is valuable. The building blocks of new ideas are often embedded in existing knowledge. Originals by Adam Grant. Great ideas about nonconformity and inversely breaking out of conventional lines of thinking. 
A few points and takeaways from the book. Powerless communication, illuminate the flaws, express ideas more, censor less, embrace dissent towards consensus, decision making. There's a first mover disadvantage, in fact. Build cultures that welcome dissent. Picture yourself as the enemy. Hitmakers by Derek Thompson. It's a fun book about the science of attention economy success. Few quotes and ideas. Music is like memory candy. The construction of a pop song is something almost mathematical. Trends emerge as fashion. Bose Einstein distribution dynamics for attention modeling around pop culture phenomena. Careful around that event horizon. Men in the 1920s liked funny pictures and the women liked pretty photos. An industrial revolution in attention. Why Nations Fail addresses the cycle of prosperity and decline as a result of extractive or inclusive socioeconomic institutions. Economic institutions emerge from political institutions. A couple dichotomies here. Extractive versus inclusive. Centralization versus democratization or pluralistic. A few quotes. Political centralization often creates a tendency toward absolutism. And sustained economic growth requires innovation. Surprise, surprise. Metamath by Gregory Chaitin is a really great book that examines math and philosophy through history with a focus on randomness and the halting problem. A couple ideas from this one. My intuition whispered to me because the idea wanted to be found. Software is frozen thought. Leibniz note here. Music is the unconscious joy that the soul experiences on counting without realizing that it is counting. For an idea to be successful, you have to give it away. Philosophy is to math as the theoretical is to the computational. Sapiens by Yuval Noah Harari. Got a lot of notes on this one. I'll go into a couple of highlights here. He connects dots between Cognition, agriculture, and science as man's revolutionary eras. Abstraction symbols are key to overcoming environment and threats. One quote we have here, man is the deadliest species in the annals of biology. But then again, cultural appropriation is the reason we have any culture at all. The color of the global empire may well be green, and it is an empire of the mind. I Am a Strange Loop by Douglas Hofstetter is about consciousness and reality. Did a full review of this one, which you can watch on YouTube. Couple quotes. Analogy has force in proportion to its precision and its visibility. You are a satellite to your brain, as in your mind. Hardware is to software as brains are to minds. Getting into computationalism space there. What if synesthetic experiences are just our brain sensing the harmonic relationship among the perceivable spectrums of different energy frequencies? Thinking Fast and Slow by Daniel Kahneman is one of those popular ones that people talk about. Here's a couple of notes. Media is burdening processing and recall for our minds. Suggestion is powerful and makes us wrong when System 2 his phrase, the focused subjective mind system, is not engaged diligently. A strategy for deliberately thinking the opposite may be a good defense against the anchoring effect. The human mind doesn't do well with non-events. We're prone to overestimate the predictability of the world we live. Intuition is honed pattern recognition. Reclaiming Conversation by Sherry Turkle is incredible. I hadn't read something that is so accurate in its portrayal of the current social landscape in a long time. Highly recommend you check that one out for yourself. Couple of notes. A technology of talk for therapy. The fourth chair, a conversation beyond Thoreau's nature with machines. Do people have the conversation skills to discuss the threats to the preservation of conversation skills? Maybe modern life is finding a way to build Walden in your mind. 
as we ask. And this is getting particularly interesting right now as we're seeing technology like chat GPT become more and more prevalent, potentially even eclipsing search engines or being molded into them. She suggests to seek objectively to find the narrative in the numbers. That's my note. Astrophysics for People in a Hurry by Neil deGrasse Tyson. I really appreciate when he goes into the chemistry of the early universe and history of civilization scientific developments. I don't think that this is a particularly hard-hitting book, but there are a couple of interesting moon facts that you find from it. The moon is equivalent to 1% of the Earth's mass. The moon is 1 400th the diameter of the sun and 1 400th the distance so they appear the same size in the sky and allow for a perfect eclipse like August 21st, 2017. The fact that it's tidally locked with the Earth results in seeing only one side. Can't stay on Earth and see the dark side of the moon. He asks readers, or listeners in my case, to ponder the cosmic perspective and insists that perhaps flag-waving and space exploration do not mix. A Bone to Pick by Mark Bittman. I have a few insights from this one. Lawn is our biggest crop. That's a shortcoming, not a benefit. Xeriscaping, how water-limited communities in the southwest of the United States decorate their lawns by considering the environmental demands. Making food stamps acceptable at Farmers markets could alter access for communities and also markets for producers, which is key. 10 billion animals are raised and killed in a year for food in the United States. Livestock accounts for 20% of greenhouse gases. Meat without feet, that is laboratory meat, may be a viable protein solution for some parts of society. I'm not necessarily on board with that uh, for a number of reasons. And I think that uh, in the years since reading this, we can look at Beyond Meat, I think is what the company is called, and the trouble that they're having getting adoption of their product for one reason or another. Sugar is toxic. Think in terms of cellular damage and inhibition, though our brain needs it. Academics are floating the idea of Alzheimer's as a form of type 3 diabetes. Interesting point there. One extra serving of fruit or vegetables a day would save 30,000 lives that die from cardiovascular disease. Seeing a big uptick in heart-related issues over the last couple of years may or may not be dietarily related. Relationship between GMO seed producers and pesticide producers is symbiotic. Uh, You can see that as one-to-one in a company like Monsanto. Convenience led to global slop, and we are the hogs. Heating up pre-made things isn't the same as combining ingredients into nutritious foods. Taxes on ingredients such as sugar also don't address production side responsibility and marketing. We see some of that stuff in regards to Coca-Cola and legislating. Subsidies probably need to be restructured. 